Aid trucks are finally on the way to Gaza to provide urgent supplies to stranded Palestinians. In Hong Kong, a boar charges into a flower shop in Mong Kok. Good evening and welcome to TVB News. A convoy of 20 trucks passed through the Rafah crossing from Egypt into the Gaza Strip today, the first batch of humanitarian aid to enter the besieged enclave since October 7th. Critics, though, say it is a mere drop in the ocean, with 2.3 million Gaza residents deprived of essential supplies. More than 208 trucks were waiting to provide relief, with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres saying the trucks will be the difference between life and death for Gaza residents. Nasir Karim has more. After almost two weeks of waiting, Egyptian volunteers cheered and waved flags as eight trucks finally moved into the blockaded Gaza Strip. Trucks with humanitarian aid that had been stranded in Egypt finally entered the Rafah border crossing after days of diplomatic talks over the delivery of relief goods. Israel imposed a total blockade in response to a deadly attack on Israel by Palestinian group Hamas on October 7th. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the trucks provide a lifeline to the people of Gaza. It is impossible to be here and not uh, to feel a broken heart. Behind these walls, we have two million people that is suffering enormously, that has no water, no food, no medicine, no fuel, that is under fire, that needs everything to survive. So these trucks are not just trucks, they are a lifeline. Movement of aid from Rafah had been held up with Israel demanding a way to inspect the goods to prevent the import of weapons. Before fighting broke out, around 450 aid trucks arrived daily in Gaza. Earlier, Hamas issued a statement saying a mere 20 trucks is a Zionist American attempt to mislead the world that they care about the humanitarian crisis. The enclave's interior minister says at least 18 Palestinian Christians were killed and several more injured after Israel struck a Greek Orthodox church. The church of St. Porphyrius was one of the oldest in Gaza and was filled with people seeking shelter from Israeli strikes. Beyond Gaza's borders, Israeli troops and tanks continue to stand by in readiness for an expected ground attack. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has asked infantry soldiers to prepare to enter Gaza, though he gave no timeline for the offensive. Tel Aviv is determined to eliminate Hamas from Gaza and cripple their ability to govern the region. Nazri Karim, TVB News. U.S. President Joe Biden and other officials said they are doing everything they can to secure the release of the remaining hostages. But Secretary of State Antony Blinken stopped short of commenting on whether Israel's airstrikes should be stopped in order to get more people out. NBC News has more. Tonight, the urgent push to get all the hostages released from Gaza. They include men, women, young boys, young girls, elderly people from many nations. Secretary of State Tony Blinken now saying the focus is on the 10 additional Americans who remain unaccounted for, along with around 200 others. The urgent work to free every single American, to free all other hostages, continues. Working with Qatar and other countries he visited last week, shuttling around the Mideast, pressing them to use their connections to Hamas to get the hostages out. The freed Americans, Judith and Natalie Renan, once they've gotten medical treatment, will be invaluable sources for how the remaining hostages are being treated and held. NBC's David Rode was held hostage for seven months by the Taliban in 2008 before getting out in a daring escape. Israeli officials will talk immediately to this mother and daughter and try to get a sense of where they were held, how many other captives were held uh, with them, and just get a sense of, of what Hamas is doing with all of these captives. Is there any way to find them? Is there any way to rescue them? It's a much bigger issue now, hostage taking, for civilians, for the hostages themselves, and for governments. And there has to be a more unified effort 
with the U.S. and its allies in the Middle East, its allies in Europe, to how to stop this kidnapping from happening. The U.S. does not trust the terror group's promises, but Hamas has said it will release all the non-military hostages if Israel halts the airstrikes. Should even the airstrikes be stopped to see if you could get more people out? It's very simple. Um, hostages should be released immediately and unconditionally. In an interview with the China media group, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Moscow will endorse a peaceful resolution to the Ukraine war, provided that it protects its legitimate security interests. Putin said Ukraine's Western allies had initiated military operations in eastern Ukraine prior to Russia's involvement. He said officials from the U.S. government openly acknowledged spending up to five billion U.S. dollars to help launch military operations in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. Putin said Russia has never been opposed to a peaceful solution and reached an agreement with Kiev during the early weeks of the war. He said Ukraine reneged on that deal soon after Russia withdrew troops from near the capital. Chinese ambassador to the U.S. Xie Feng said China-U.S. relations appear to be stabilizing. The remarks were made during the National Convention of U.S.-China People's Friendship Association. He said China and U.S. ties is the most important bilateral relationship in the world. Xie added how both countries get along determine the future of humanity. The ambassador said recently, under the guidance of the two leaders, both countries have seen some positive signs of stabilizing. He noted both sides should seize the opportunity and manage differences with concrete actions in order to move forward the relationship. Here in Hong Kong, in the busy Monka flower market this morning, a wild boar ran towards a flower shop and tussled with the shop owner and police officers. The beast was later euthanized. Mimo Sengai has details. A rare sight of struggle between men and beasts at a flower market in Hong Kong. Police officers and a flower shop owner were attempting to capture an unexpected intruder, a wild boar. During the mayhem, the animal attacked the shop owner and charged inside the shop. Police then used shields to block the entrance to prevent the boar from escaping. Officers from the Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department were called to the scene. A narcotic was administrated to the boar and it was taken away by the AFCD officers. Police received a report at around 9 a.m. today saying a 1.2-meter long boar was spotted on Yunnai Street. This woman who works at the shop said the beast first entered a nearby shop before being intercepted by police. The boar only came to our shop afterwards, she said. The injured owner was sent to Kwanghua Hospital for treatment. A local wild boar concern group said the incident could have been avoided had the animal not been emotionally stimulated. In this situation, I would advise people uh, to let the wild boar uh, calm down, just uh, don't touch them. They are afraid of people and um, they are afraid of a very noisy environment. Wong also hopes the AFCD can change their policy by not killing captive wild boars. Memos 9, TVB News. The northeast monsoon has brought cooler weather to Guangdong. In Hong Kong, temperatures have dropped by around 3 to 5 degrees Celsius compared to yesterday. Many people were seen putting on an extra layer on the street today. At noon, urban areas recorded an average of 22 and 23 degrees. In Taimoshan at midnight, temperatures hit a low of 15.5 degrees, while Longping on Lantau Island recorded 16.2 degrees. The observatory said the intraday temperature difference will be quite big in the coming few days. Still to come on tonight's news. Fine for disposing litter improperly will go up tomorrow. Latest Republican candidate for U.S. House Speaker is rejected by his own party. Another former lawyer and co-defender of Donald Trump pleads guilty.
Welcome back to TVB News. From tomorrow, residents will have to pay a heavier fine of $3,000 or $6,000 for littering and shop front extensions under the amended fixed penalty ordinance. But some shop owners said the new fixed penalty may affect the operation of their business. Memo Sengai reports. The Chinwan wet market was crowded on Saturday morning. Some shops placed empty baskets and boxes on the street. Some shop owners set up small vegetable stands outside their shops. Starting from Sunday, the fixed penalty for shop front extensions and illegal disposal of construction waste or other types of rubbish will be adjusted to $6,000. What do the public think? This vegetable store owner believes the new measure will affect her business. They will prosecute us even when we are simply unloading goods. It is useless to argue with the authorities, she said. But this resident supports the new fixed penalty. I think the new penalty is reasonable because shop front extensions of some big shops are serious. People cannot even walk, she said. Moreover, under the Amanda Fixed Penalty Ordinance, residents who commit public hygiene offences, including spitting and littering, will be fined $3,000. To raise public awareness of the new changes, the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department said promotion and education work has been carried out. Mims Nai, TVB News. A 20-month-old baby boy died of complications after contracting COVID earlier this week. A leading medical academic said more research should be done on infected children, while experts urged more parents to have their kids vaccinated. A 20-month-old boy who contracted COVID died at the United Christian Hospital on Thursday after developing complications with acute necrotizing encephalitis. <laughs> Speaking on a radio program, pediatrics professor Lao Yu Long from the University of Hong Kong said he does not yet know what caused the boy's condition to deteriorate rapidly. But he said according to records on COVID infections around the world, around 10 percent of children and elderly patients will develop serious complications. Lao believes these cases involve deficiency in the patient's immune system. He said in future, Hong Kong should conduct research into why this group of children who appear to be in good health would die within a short period of time after they come into contact with the virus. Meanwhile, experts are calling on vaccination for children, especially when COVID infections are expected to peak in the coming months. Some pointed out the number of children jabbed is alarmingly low. Up to the 15th of October, in Hong Kong, young children between six months old below three years old, we only have 30% of our children population had received the single dose, one dose of COVID vaccination, and only 20% having two doses of COVID vaccination. That means uh, almost 80% of our young children do not have any proper COVID vaccination coverage uh, in this winter. As the weather becomes colder, Viruses that cause upper respiratory infections will become active. The mainland has experienced a surge in the number of mycoplasma pneumoniae infections, which have also risen here in Hong Kong. Experts warned that the incubation period for that virus could be as long as four weeks, meaning the outbreak can last very long as well. But so far, there is no vaccination targeting that virus. Police arrested a 30-year-old man suspected of breaking into a local girls' school to carry out behaviours that include peeping and clandestine photo-taking. The man was arrested at an industrial building unit in San Pokong on Friday and he was brought to his home in Chengkuno for investigation. There, officers seized school uniforms, female stockings, women heels and makeup products. Good Hope School reported to the police on Monday saying a student found a man wearing the school uniform hiding in a restroom cubicle and he ran away after he was spotted. Police say the act of peeping and clandestine photo taking is dis. The man was arrested on suspicion of voyeurism. Offenders face a maximum jail term of five years. Overseas, the search for a Congress speaker has taken yet another twist. Republicans on Friday dropped Jim Jordan as their nominee for House Speaker. The decision was made during a closed-door session after the ally of Donald Trump failed badly on a third ballot for the gavel. I thought it was important that we all... We all know, get an answer to the question if they wanted me to continue in that, um, in that role. 
And so we put the question to them. They made a different decision. We need to come together and figure out who our speaker is going to be. I'm going to work as hard as I can to help that individual so that we can go help the American people. Facing a deepening crisis, Republicans have no realistic or workable plan to unite the fractured GOP majority, elect a new speaker, and return to the work of Congress. The chamber has been languishing since hardliners ousted Kevin McCarthy at the start of the month. In a floor vote on Friday morning, Jordan's third attempt at the gavel, he lost 25 Republican colleagues, worse than he had fared earlier in the week. Kenneth Chesbro, a lawyer who represented Donald Trump's 2020 presidential campaign, pleaded guilty on Friday to illegal efforts to reverse the former U.S. president's election defeat in the state of Georgia. Chesbro's plea came days before he was to go on trial. Mr. Chesbro has asked to be sentenced on the First Defender Act without objection from the state. I'll approve that request, withhold adjudication. Uh, but I must notify you, sir, that the plea can't be withdrawn simply because you don't abide by the terms of the sentence. Uh, the sentence would be five years probation. Chesbro pleaded guilty in a Fulton County court to conspiracy to commit filing of false documents, a felony, one day after another former lawyer for Trump, Sidney Powell, pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges. The two had been scheduled to be tried together beginning on Monday. Chesbro agreed to testify against Trump and the other 15 co-defendants in the racketeering case brought by Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis. Do you understand that? In Beijing this week, five bronze sculptures of zodiac heads that were lost for more than a century are now on display. They were looted from the Summer Palace by Anglo-French allied forces. In recent years, China's government were able to retrieve them, and now the public can see them on display until October 29th. Tracy Furness has more. The five bronze animal heads, a horse, bull, tiger, monkey and pig, are from a collection of 12 zodiac animals that Chinese ancestors used to worship in ancient times. Originally, each of them stood on bronze stands around a pool in the now partly ruined royal garden to form a fountain clock. The animal head sculptures could date back to the reign of Emperor Qianlong of the Qing dynasty between 1644 and 1911. They were looted from the royal garden by Anglo-French allied forces in 1860. Wang Meng, the deputy director of the Yuan Ming Yan Museum, explained that the images of zodiac animals are ingrained in the traditional Chinese culture. The portrayal of images as having an animal face and human body epitomized the confluence between Chinese and Western civilizations. The public can now see these once lost treasures in the Yuan Ming Yuan Museum until October 29th. Tracy Furness, TVB News. As Storm Babbitt passed through the UK, a pair of dogs was filmed running through dense sea foam whipped up by high winds and rainy conditions. The dogs and their owners were in Hoik, a village in Northumberland, when they encountered the foamy weather phenomenon. Parts of eastern Scotland experienced severe flooding on Friday after the storm brought heavy rainfall and strong winds. And that's the news. Thanks for watching.